Welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to talk about the top 5 war machines in 9th age. Um, so these are going to be the units that have reload, that have round bases, um, and that predominantly shoot to, uh, to kill enemy units. For me the number 5 pick for this is going to be the Empire of Sunstyle Mortar. Um, so I have been playing Empire of Sunstyle also quite a bit actually, mostly just 2 years ago. A bit more than 2 years ago three years ago maybe already even um, and I was a really big fan of the mortars um, I actually preferred them over the cannons uh, because they are a bit more um, more flexible than the, the cannons like cannons are really just uh, counters to single model monsters and even then there's a lot of monsters that are only being run with either a 5 abegas or even a 4 abegas um, or the, well 4 abegas is mostly just large or uh, large stuff or something like a chariot um, but yeah with the with the cannon I always find that you just roll so little dice that you get screwed over all the time by bad luck and with the mortar the situation is a bit different because you are a catapult so as a catapult you first have a two hit roll if you fail then you have another two hit roll and this second two hit roll um, decreases the size of your catapult shot by one but it also decreases the strength by one so normally with your mortar you would be at strength three this is going to be at strength two then so that that is quite a bit less because you're going to go to five by five strength two um, however if you still hit a full unit you still will manage to uh, do a fair amount of uh, damage and if you do manage to get this uh, six by six strength three shot <laughs> then uh, you're in for a treat so that is that is really good um you can use an engineer on it. I feel like usually the engineer is only really worth it on the volley gun, I think, because then the two-hit roll is, is really pivotal in the performance of the volley gun. Uh, for a mortar and a cannon, especially for a cannon, it's mostly about the zoning, in my view. Um, so also an engineer, I don't really see the value of it. Um, but some other people really like him. Uh, you have also have access to flaming swords, so you can get effectively a strength 4 mortar with 6x6, which is amazing. Um, and you also have a strength 6 AP4 D3 wounds hit, so worst case you can still uh, use it as a bit of an improvised cannon. You don't have the D3 plus 1 wounds, you don't have the clipped wings. Uh, but, but against anything that you would want to shoot at with a cannon that doesn't fly anyway, and that has uh, even... Uh, resilience up to resilience 5 you're not too far away from the performance of a cannon and you still hit uh, the unit that uh, this model can be in so I think generally mortar um, it's a really decent artillery piece and then we go to the number 4 spot this is going to be the kingdom of Aquitaine scorpion for me uh, I believe this is a better choice than the mortar even um, because well it is cheaper and it also influences the battle in a, quite a dramatic way um, so I often see Kingdom of Aquitaine armies where people don't take any scorpions and I always wonder why you don't just put two scorpions on the board um, I get that in a lot of matchups they don't do anything uh, but for all these matchups where your enemy has something that is large or uh, well gigantic basically or large with towering presence you're not going to be in the way of yourself with the uh, um, with the uh, knights on the table so then anywhere on the board you can still target the enemy uh, with a range 48 inch shot which is quite decent you hit normally in a 4 plus it's going to be a 5 plus at more than 24 inches and also terrain um, you're going to have um, the disadvantage that the terrain will affect your shot however if you do roll this lucky six on your 120 point scorpion your enemy is not going to be happy about this with your strength six ap10 shot uh, with multiple wounds d3 plus one and clipped wings um, so the reason that i prefer the scorpion over the uh, um, the ox and goblins skewerer is that the skewerer i believe only has d3 wounds and it doesn't have clipped wings this one is really dedicated at uh, taking down the flying stuff even. Um, yeah, so for the price point, I, I think it's it's really worth it to uh, to put these down. Also, you have six hit points on these guys, so that is that is quite meaningful. 
Um, I think they're just really great pieces. Um, and anyone playing Kingdom of Aquitaine should really consider them in my view. Then for the number three pack, we're going to go to the uh, new Alpha of the Vermin Swarm book. And this is going to be the Racket Shit Mouse Cannon. Um, so I think it's a wordplay on the Gauss Cannon that is uh, present in some video games. Um, but this time it's a Mouse Cannon because <laughs> it's Vermin Swarm. Uh, basically, this is, in my view, a cheap cannon for only 210 points. It does get the cannon special rules and it still hits on a 4+. plus. Uh, it has 48 inch range, which is fine, I think. Um, so, practically, you have a model that um, hits anything within 24 inches that it wants to target. So, gigantic stuff on a 3+, plus unless it's concealed by terrain. Um, and you're going to deliver a strength 7 shot with AP4. With area attack, uh, that's not really important. However, the other guys are going to be hit with a strength 5 shot, so that is quite decent. Um, you have a mishap mechanic in the book. Um, this replaces your misfire, but in most cases, this is actually less harmful to yourself right now than um, the normal misfire that you get in the main rulebook. Uh, you only get multiple wounds D3. However, you can also uh, fire in the trial and terror mode, then the range is set to 24 inches, so you lose one on the two hit roll, but you gain accurate, there you get it back again, and you get multiple wounds D6, um, and then you suffer a mishap on a two hit roll of one and two, so you're more likely to destroy your own model, but it's anyway a 210 point cannon instead of a... Uh, 250, 260 point one that other armies have. And I must say, Strength 7 is in most cases enough. AP4 is in a lot of cases enough. Uh, multiple Wounds D6 is just really great playing to anything on the board. Um, in addition, you can have two of these models in your army. Um, yeah. I think it's it's really good, uh, especially also since against those targets where you are going to struggle maybe. The army still has a plus one to wound item in the roster available and you have access to smite the unbelievers. So you could do a resilient swing basically of two uh, to effectively get your cannon up to strength nine. Uh, there is also an engineer in the army available. Um, if you are going to go for double cannon, which I think in Vermin Swarm currently is a good build, um, because you do have the points available anyway, uh, because they're quite cheap, then an engineer might be worth it, uh, just to guarantee that you will get this hit once you uh, uh, once you go for the trial and tower option. And then, yeah, just multiple wounds, D6. It's, it's really dicey, but I mean, you can shoot a dragon off in one turn <laughs> for 200 points. Uh, what is not to like? Well, as an opponent, there's a lot of stuff not to like about that. <laughs> then we continue with the number two choice. This is for me going to be the Dwarven Holt Organ Gun. I feel like this is an artillery piece that uh, dominates quite a lot of army lists uh, from the Dwarven Holt. I don't actually think organ guns in general are that good um, because they they divert your army into a certain playstyle. However, when they work, they really work. And also Dwarven Artillery in general um, is really good. And I think the organ gun is one of the guns that they have that benefits most from the, the Dwarven Special Rules. Um, so you have 2d6 shots on a volley gun. I think 2d6 shots is the sweet spot to be at with a volley gun because the Empire of Sun style one has 3d6 shots and it also hits on a 4 plus, that is all fair and well. However, with the 3d6, you're also more likely to roll a 1 on the amount of shots and then you get a minus 1 to hit. So, generally, with the Empire of Sun style one, 50% of the time you're gonna roll at least one, uh, 1 and a double 1 on the amount of shots is, I believe, a misfire. That is also going to happen a lot more often with the Empire of Sun style version. Um, so you have 2d6 short strength 5 AP3 with a range of 30 inches. And 30 inches is just the sweet spot where your short range is also 15 inches. And that is way more manageable than, uh, than the Empire of Sun style version. So with the Empire of Sun style version, I always struggle to, to make my points back out of it. Because you start with a 4 up to hit, um, you are going to shoot probably at long range, at longer than 12 inches. And yes, I think that these 3 inches here do matter quite a bit. 
Um, so with the Envar of Sunstar one, you hit on a 5 plus normally, you are going to get a 1 in your 2 hit roll, or at least you have to consider that, and then there's still terrain your opponent can stand in. In the end, you're not going to do any wounds, basically. Uh, with this one, you're way more reliable, I feel. Um, you're going to do maybe a little bit less damage on those spiky rolls. However, you're going to do just enough um, to really alter the field. In addition, you can make it wound crafted, so you get plus 1 to wound on all your shots. <laughs> and if you want, you can make it flaming. Um, so that you don't have to deal with these pesky regeneration rolls. I had once a situation where I had an opponent who had his uh, organ gun next to a Hydra of mine because I had an overrun with my Hydra and I <laughs> managed to put it in a spot next to an organ gun. And he was disappointed that he didn't remove my Hydra in one round of one volley of shooting. <laughs> and I was like, dude, your organ gun is like two thirds of the price of my Hydra. This, this should not be a thing in 9th age. Uh, otherwise, Dwarven Artillery, all of them, they have a plus 4 to the model's roll on the misfire tables. So basically, if you misfire, nothing happens. Um, you are stubborn with all your war machines, and the organ gun really benefits from this because it's uh, closer to the front lines. And it, yeah, in that sense, it can really be an anchor in your line still against stuff that is not as killy as, uh, as you might, as, might um, want to allow on your organ gun. All in all, I think it's a really good choice, and it definitely uh, deserves my number two spot. Then the best war machine in Ninth Age for me, it has to be a dwarf. It has to be a flamethrower because I think flamethrowers are amazing in Ninth Age. So it is going to be the Infernal Dwarfs Nafta Thrower. Um, yeah, the advantage of flamethrowers is that they always hit on a two plus. <laughs> But then let's get a bit of a deeper dive in what this machine actually does. So it hits on a 2+, plus, um, and it has strength 4, strength 5 if you're at short range, AP1 on long range, AP2 on short range, and it has multiple wounds in D3, um, I believe just always. That is quite impressive. Um, there's a lot of interaction in the army with flaming and oil skins. So you have flaming attacks, uh, the oil skins allow you to get a reroll to wound. It has accurate, uh, well, it doesn't really <laughs> matter if you always hit on a 2 plus. And the high caliber rule makes it so that the range of the artillery weapon has this quite below. So, normally, if you have a, uh, a flamethrower that you have as a small piece, I believe, you only have a range of 12 inches. If you take it as an infernal artillery, you go to the double range. So, you go to a 24 range machine. And enemy units hit by the weapon suffer minus one inch advance rate, uh, rate up to a minimum of three inches and minus two march rate to a minimum of six inches. Um, so there is a little bonus in there. Uh, but the most important part is that you can thin down units with this incredibly quickly. It's This is the bane of, of standard infantry. Um, and with multiple wounds D3, it's also the bane of, of large infantry. Anything that is not that much armored is going to really struggle against this thing. Um, so what is going to happen is you're going to take D6 hits uh, plus D3 for every rank in your unit. So if you have like 20 heavy infantry, um, then you're going to get D6 plus 3 D3 hits, I believe. So on average, that would be 6 plus 3, like 10 hits or so. Uh, they're going to wound on a 3 plus, so that's 6 wounds more or less. Uh, with AP1, so that's like five wounds, that's a quarter of your unit. Um, and it scales quite well with unit size, so that, well, you're gonna likely just kill off like a quarter per rank. Um, so the bigger the units that you encounter, the more effective this war machine is. And a lot of armies nowadays actually do have quite big units from time to time. So I think it always pays off to uh, to play in an, uh, a Nafta thrower, especially with the uh, flaming and oil skins uh, interactions in the Infernal Dwarf book. Yeah, this is this is really just a good war machine. <laughs> this is this is really decent. Um, I think maybe in the meta wise, it's it's not what people um, are most concerned about at most times and what the target of, of war machines is often believed to be because these these 
more vulnerable units to shooting normally you deal with them in combat <laughs> for this is just a way to get around it and and just put a big no button on your opponent's big unit of whatever uh, because basically over the over the course of a game this guy is really gonna definitely make his uh, point value so that's gonna be it for me today um, I have also paid some attention to including different types of war machines uh, because a list of like five different cannons is not that interesting I find um, so yeah please tell me what you think and uh, if I missed something really incredible in my uh, in my summary that's it for this video I hope to see you the next time